Hello and welcome to students and parents and thank you very much for your virtual attendance to this event. This presentation provides a short introduction to the guided options process for Year 9 and some initial messages from me about how important this process is and the things you need to consider when making these decisions. After you've watched this presentation, you'll need to watch Mrs Thomas's as she takes you through the guide adoptions process and what you need to do next to make and submit your course choices. Mrs Thomas will also show you how you can find out more about each subject as you begin to research the various options that are open to you. So welcome to your Year 9 Guide Adoptions event. I believe that the transition into Key Stage 4 marks a pivotal sea change in a young person's academic career. Up to this point, all students have followed a national curriculum. And whilst this curriculum is adapted by the college to meet the needs of every individual student, it is essentially a collection of subjects that is determined by the government over which you have no choice or input. As a result, for the first three years of secondary school, students simply follow the programme of study they're told to and are essentially passengers on your current curriculum. Well, that changes now. From this point, students become active participants in shaping their own future. From this point, you move from the passenger seat to behind the steering wheel. Now, while that's a frightening analogy, let's keep going with it for a moment. As with learning to drive, the decisions that you begin to make are done best with experienced guidance and advice. That is why it's fantastic to know that so many parents are watching this to support that decision-making process and why the conversations you have with your form tutors later this week and next week are absolutely key to getting those decisions right for you. I say for you because in this event, students, you're here as individuals taking the best decisions for you and your future. Experience has taught us that students watching this video are likely to fall into one of two camps. There will be some of you that fall into this category in the green arrow. I have a clear idea on what my future career will be and I'm here to select courses that best prepare me for that future. And personally, I can remember being so jealous of my classmates who fell into this camp because I fell into the second category, which was, I have no idea what career I want to pursue, but I have a good idea of what subjects I'm good at and which subjects I enjoy. I'm here to pick courses that continue my success and enjoyment of school. Well, I would say that both mindsets are okay. Whichever camp you're in, listen to the advice you receive in the coming days and act upon it. So, what does that future career look like? In short, we don't know. By 2031, you may well be driving your titanium flying car to work, where you're greeted by a robotic receptionist who pours you a decaffeinated coffee whilst you sit at your virtual desk, which scans your morning's to-do list directly to your retina. Or maybe not. However, all researchers and human resources specialists are in agreement that all of our jobs will look very different in 10 years time. And the emergence of new industries and technologies is inevitable. Furthermore, researchers predict that the lifelong career is a concept of our generation, not for our students. It's expected that today's learners will have on average between 10 and 14 jobs before the age of 38. This is now being referred to as the gig economy, in which highly trained and highly creative professionals move from contract to contract, from project to project, from industry to industry, even from country to country throughout their career. Something that might well frighten some adults watching this, but something that will become second nature to many of our children. So 
how do we prepare for such an uncertain future? Firstly, you choose the courses that best fit your future, your skill set, your passions and your interests, not somebody else's and not your friends. Consider carefully the paths that each course opens up to you and how you can take that subject further, either at our sixth form college or elsewhere. And finally, consider the transferable skills that each course develops and the wider opportunities it provides. A school's curriculum planning and options process is heavily influenced by government policy. A number of years ago now, the Department for Education ended modular examinations that could be taken at various points in the academic year. And so the vast majority of courses are predominantly assessed through a final set of examinations at the end of the two year programme. Furthermore, coursework and controlled assessment has either gone completely from most GCSEs or make a very small contribution to the final grade. So students, you will need to get your head down from day one. You'll need to attend well, and you'll need to revise as you go, starting from day one. The concept of the English Baccalaureate is still part of the government's policy, and it looks like it's here to stay. This means that students are encouraged to follow a programme of study that includes English, maths, science, a humanities subject and a foreign language. Just to be clear, this is not a certificate or an award as such, but it is a collection of subjects that students are encouraged to follow as it is regarded highly by employers, colleges and universities. This has been part of government policy for long enough now, and we are beginning to see the implications of this as the EBAC is beginning to be factored in by colleges, apprenticeship providers, and universities in their entry requirements. To further support this decision-making process, we encourage students to research potential careers and where the subjects lead on to, and some of the entry requirements possibly for each of these career pathways. This first careers website is just one source of such information. And if any students would like any further careers advice, support or guidance, please do not hesitate to contact Mrs. Hall here at the college. So that's it from me. I now invite you to watch Mrs. Thomas's presentation in which she'll take you through the options process itself and how you can research each of the courses and how you can submit your course choices to school. In the meantime, I wish you all the very best of luck in your guided options process and wish you every success in the courses you embark on in September. <laughs>